Oh, it is a good time to be a Newcastle fan. Today, I am signing every single player that Newcastle United is linked with for this transfer window. Can you tell I'm just a wee bit excited for this transfer window as a Newcastle United supporter? Oh man, finally, we've become the richest club in the world and we can finally put it to some use. For those of you, again, that don't know what sort of team we have, I mean, just look at the Premier League table. Not exactly ideal. And this is the team that we currently have. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some okay players in there and some players that I love, all right? Alan Sam Axman, Callum Wilson, Dubravka's a decent goalkeeper. It's getting a bit tough to name a few other players that are absolute class. We've had a rough run, a very, very rough run this season. And well, we're 19th, we're a few points from safety. Uh, we need to kick up the arse if we're gonna stay up. And ever since the takeover, now that we have more money than God, we're hoping to put that money to good use and to save ourselves in this window. I have here in this shortlist, a list of every single player that so far has been linked with Newcastle United in this January transfer window. I'm gonna go ahead and sign absolutely every single one of them to see if it is enough to keep us up. I've set up a little scenario here where we've got about the same amount of points and we're in about the same sort of position in the Premier League. I mean, we're actually probably arguably in a worse position here in this simulation, in this career mode. So if we really can get out, then I'll take that as a good sign. First play that Newcastle United is not just linked with, but I think at the time of recording, we have an actual transfer fee like agreed to of like 12 million pounds, which is amazing here for Kieran Trippier. 84 rated. He is going to be the highest rated Newcastle United player for over like over 10 years at least. I think the highest rated player since him is Michael Owen back in like FIFA 07, 08. Mental stuff. We're having a lot of interest in this man Sven Botman as well. 21 year old younger centre back playing for Lille in Ligue 1. He's 79 rated. 6 foot 4. Like the look of this guy and he's also recently in real life actually liked an Instagram post linking either himself or Kieran Trippier to the club. So that's a very good sign. Luka Digne is a player that's being rumoured with a move away and Newcastle are linked with him. So there you go immediately. We need bloody fullbacks and another defender. So that's an immediately three great signings I'd be super happy with. Aaron Ramsey is linked with Newcastle United and has been for a, a bit of a while, you know, for like basically the whole season. If he are, I don't know if he's as strong the links this time around, but still. Genie Wijnaldum has gone to PSG only this season, but it hasn't really worked out. Hasn't played much. Maybe a loan possibly back to Newcastle could be on the cards. This is a bit of a big one and I'm not sure if it's actually going to happen because I feel like even for where we are and with the owners that we have, I think the, the fees would just be off the chain for this guy. Usman Dembele is like asking for 40 million pounds a year from Barcelona, which I just, I cannot fathom. First off, you've basically ruined that club with how much you've been injured and how poor of a signing you've been. And then you have the goal to ask for 40 million pounds and it bro, Nah, I don't know if I want that anywhere near my club. But with him being in the last year of his contract and it looking like he's not going to stay at Barcelona, it presents an interesting opportunity to get a guy that if he's fit could be world class and we could get him for quite cheap in comparison. He's a hell of a risk though, so I'm not so sure. But we have other players we can go for. Darwin Nunes is a player that's been linked with Newcastle United for a bit. I think like a 40, 50 million pound fee, which is nuts. But it's just kind of mad that I also have recently signed this guy in an actual career mode I'm doing with Wrexham and he's been killing it in the Prem. So if he could recreate that success, I'd be all for it. But the one striker that has well and truly proved to himself in the Prem is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. God knows what's happening with him at that football club. He's pulling all these maneuvers. He's not playing game time. And to be fair, Arsenal actually kind of look pretty good even without him. It's got to be said. So if Aubameyang were to leave Arsenal, he could go to a couple of different clubs. But imagine him going to Newcastle as well. Again, another player in his early 30s, maybe looking for that one last big paycheck. Could Newcastle be that team for him? And before we continue on with today's video, people, I thought I'd let you know this video is brought to you by Turtle Beach. You already know by now that I've had so many awesome products sent my way by Turtle Beach in the last couple of months or so. In terms of the gear, some of the headsets they've sent me, it's been nuts, but one of my favorites by far has been the Recon Controller. Turtle Beach make a bunch of different products which are like specifically tailored to certain platforms and this, the Recon Controller, is specifically designed for Xbox Series X and of course even for PC. It comes of course with a headset plug-in so that way you can use all of Turtle Beach's audio gaming features. It is the first controller that pairs game-winning controls with game-winning audio. 
It also comes with dual mappable buttons as well as something called Pro Focus Mode. And what it does is it tunes thumbstick sensitivity for longer range accuracy. You'll become a gaming god if you compare this controller and one of Turtle Beach's headsets together. Cheers again, Turtle Beach. Thank you again, guys. Link in the description down below. And let's get underway with the video. As a Newcastle fan, am I expecting every single one of these players to join the club in January? No, of course I am not. But I'm going to go ahead and sign them anyway to see who does the best, to see if these players can pull us out of our relegation status, and if we can survive this season, see what else we can manage with these players. Immediately, I can see that we're having to pay way more than what Newcastle United in real life are probably going to have to pay for Kira Trippier, which is mad. But it would seem as though we can probably pay about $36 million for this guy. I mean, what that works into into pounds, we'll have to figure out. Simeone is going to be weird and ask for a selling clause, but you know what? Fine, whatever. We'll get the job done. Sven Botman's going to have to be about 40 to 50 million. I think I should be able to secure a $45 million offer for him. Yep, they're going to take that. All right, 45 million for Botman. Dinier looks like he's going to be be bang on 39 million, so I'll just pay that for him. Easy as. Rafa Benitez, good doing business with you. Ramsey's only going to cost 11 million, it looks like. And what about Jenny Wynaldum? He's going to be about for 60 million, I think. I'll offer 60 million for Wynaldum, but I get the feeling that obviously I don't think he'd join Newcastle for a transfer fee. I think it'd probably be a loan, but we'll just get it. We'll just get the job done anyway. Now, the next one's going to be for Usman Dembele, and I'm very interested to see how much this man's going to set me back. 120k worth of wage, a pretty big signing bonus, and everything like that, but I guess we'll just just take it. We'd be paying about just under 90 million. I think it worked out to be 85 million, which is pretty insane. Again, in dollars, pounds, that'd probably be like 50, 55 million, maybe. That's just off the top of my head, best guess. But imagine signing this bloke up for Newcastle United from Barcelona. That would be, I'll admit it, it's a downgrade, but she should be getting paid. To be fair, I don't think Barcelona would be crying to see the back of him anyway, but Nunes and Aubameyang are the last ones. Nunes, what's he going to be? About 50 to 55 mil, I reckon, there in dollars, and Aubameyang Yang would set us back 40, yeah, it looks like 40 million flat. Yeah, it might actually be $50 million for Darwin Nunes, which is interesting because that was a reported fee, at least in pounds. 55 million, you know what? I'll just take it. I think we have got the fees to get the job done or the, the, the money to get the fee sorted. And finally for Aubameyang, 42 million, I think will be enough to call it a day. And yes, indeed, there we go. I don't know if there's a need to sign both Nunes and Aubameyang, but still though, we'll get the job done. Come on. I'm now going to go through, just sort out contracts with all these players get them added into the team. And actually, before maybe I sign the rest of these players, like as you see right here, take one last look at this starting 11, okay, of this Newcastle United team. Look at all those players and then let me add them in and then we see what they look like after this. I mean, Christ, look at our back four. Look at the giant gap between our center backs. No wonder we're conceding so many. But there we have it then, people. Done and dusted. Trippier, Botman, Digne, all those players in my shortlist, all those players that are linked with Newcastle United currently, signed up into the team. There may be some other players at the time of watching that have come out of the woodwork that we're not aware of. But for the time being, it basically, you know, the first couple of days of the window, these are the big ones. And so then, people, from this starting Newcastle United 11 to this, ladies and gentlemen, have a look at this team. I've kept the formation the same. Maybe you can play some tricks with it and maybe I will a little bit later. From the back, working our way up, you've got on the left-hand side at left-back, Luca Digne. You've got Botman there at centre-back as well as Trippier. I think we'd more or less expect to see probably a three at the back, five at the back, should I say, with Trippier and Digne as wing backs. Oh, wing backs. I think that'd probably suit them better, especially Kieran Trippier. But in this still 4-4-2 formation, you've got Sam Maximan, Wijnaldum, Aaron Ramsey, if he were to come. I don't know if he would... I, I'm assuming maybe after a few games, he probably might maybe start in that midfield. I don't know. It's not the greatest midfield ever. I don't know. It's hard to tell how good Ra Aaron Ramsey is anymore, but still though, Dembele on the right-hand side is also just a bit of a madness. And a brand new strike partnership of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, which would be one of the biggest probably moves that we could make. That would be right there, our Robinho signing. That would be it. And then you've got Darwin Nunes as well. Not also a bad rating. And again, I, I haven't seen a lick of him in real life, but I've played pretty well with him in my career mode. That is the only way that I could possibly say he's any good. He could be absolutely crap. I could play really well with Luca De Jong and still think that uh, he'd be absolutely sh Oh yeah, he'd be the shit. But there is the starting 11, ladies and gentlemen. And look, I can definitely play around with the formation a bit. I'll see if I can create something 
something that I feel like would be realistic with these players with this Newcastle team. Here's a little concoction I put together. It's a 5-2-3 formation. So that means our fullbacks are, you know, wingbacks more or less. That would I think that would benefit Trippier and Denier a little bit more. Some of you might be going, what the hell, Joel Linton at centre midfield. Look, listen, if you saw his performance against Manchester United, he actually has had a blinder of a game at centre midfield. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, hilariously, we've been trying to get him as a number nine or a left midfielder. And then this whole time, he's actually been a class central midfielder. I don't know. But him alongside Wijnaldum would be quite an interesting little pairing. And then I feel like you're getting a really good, uh, you're getting a lot out of Sam Maxman at the left wing. You're getting a lot out of Dembele in his natural position at right wing. And then Aubameyang up top. That is a pacey, very direct front three with good facilitation. I don't know about Joel Linton in terms of playmaking, but uh, Wijnaldum would be able to carry the ball forward pretty quickly. And I don't know, you've got your fullbacks there that'll be able to overlap. It'd be, a, it'd be an interesting team, but obviously a giant step up on what we've got currently. I honestly still can't believe, and again, I know that we're not signing all these players. That'd just be ridiculous. But bloody three of these players I'd already be super happy with. I mean, we've already basically bought a line, got one. Uh, I can't wait for the Trippier deal to blow up in our face, but I swear it's basically happening. But now then, people, as you see, I've simmed ahead and I've gone and put us in a position which we're basically in hell right here in 20th with only 12 points. We're needing a good amount of points to get out. I'm going to simulate ahead. I'm going to see what this team, this new team that we put together, can do if it can take us out of the relegation zone and if so, by how much? All right, good signs early. We did survive after spending all that cash. I didn't even really count up how much it was. I have to go back and look, but we spent too much money to not fail to survive. If that make any sense? I don't know. You stupid. But holy hell, look how close it was. There is no way that a team that gets 34 points in the Premier League this season is getting relegated. There's no way. It's more like if you get less than 30, you're probably in danger. But Newcastle managed to pick up about six or seven more wins, which is, you know, crazy more than what we We've been able to do in the first half of the season with all those new signings and look we've only just managed to stay up which to be fair is all we need to do norwich palace and leeds united were the teams that went down although we probably don't need to read too much into that it's probably better for me to sim another season and look at stats then because it'd probably be a more accurate reflection but dembele is probably the better signing he's actually had 12 goals for assists in 35 appearances i mean that's not bad at all joel Linton apparently scored a couple of that's more goals than he's got in his entire newcastle career and from center midfield at that unreal but anyway obamian got nine goals and five Five assists again, which isn't bad. I don't know how many of those came with Arsenal though, or here. So that's why I reckon we'll send one more season. Let's see what this new look team in a full season can do. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that are wondering how much in dollars it costs to sign all of these players, it was uh, about 380 million which for those of you that are wondering is uh, about 280 million pounds, which I think is about 100 more million than Newcastle can actually legally spend in this window. Okay, but one last full simulation with this team. Let's see what they manage in a full season. Just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm curious to see. Whoa, okay. This is a little bit better than I expected. We have fallen two points short of making Champions League. That is extraordinary with the team that apparently we put together today. 67 points. Everyone is still a mile off of Liverpool and Man City. City continuing to be the only two teams that are ever contending. I mean, Manchester United are up there, but whatever. Who cares? We don't even give a shit about these teams. Seriously, Newcastle in fifth. We have finished fifth like once in 20 years before, I think. That is mental. Have a look at some of the ratings, by the way. I know we bought a few older players, but goodness me, Aubameyang's down to a 79 overall. But then on the flip side of that, Dembele's up to 87. Trippier's been able to hold 84 pretty well. Botman's up to 82. Even Wayne adam has gone up. What the hell is going on with Aubameyang? Usman Dembele. Dembele has proven to be not a bad pickup. I mean, he's got 17 Premier League goals and six assists. That's not bad. 18 and seven altogether. Aubameyang, despite getting on and dropping by three overall, has still got 14 goals and two assists. I'd 100% take that. Wine Adams, not, you know, too bad either there. Nine goals, five assists for his position. Great. Darwin Nunes with seven and three. You know, probably having his position being taken out by Aubameyang, but I mean, he'd definitely take over from this point. And then, yeah, you just got others like Callum Wilson. Nice. Yeah, Alan San Maximin. Okay, sweet. Decent numbers there. And Craft popping up and been a quite surprising, uh, yeah, got five goal contributions in a season. But yeah, very, very interesting, it's got to be said. I don't think, again, we're going to be making even probably half of the signings that we made today. It, there's probably a good chance that maybe we sign, I think, the most realistic are probably Trippier and Botman. For all we know, most of these rumors could be absolute BS that's just created by the papers, or who knows, some of these are real, or maybe they just fall apart. But regardless, I get the feeling that January is going to be a historic month for Newcastle. Let's just hope all the months after that 
are a little bit more successful and memorable and we don't absolutely spend all this cash to wind up in the championship because it still could happen and if it did then well it would suck for every Newcastle fan everywhere but it'd make for a hell of a career mode you have to admit the richest club in the world in the championship but I tell you what before I go I should announce something I am currently doing the Wrexham career mode and I am going to be seeing that out all the way to its end when I find the right time to finish it but I will announce that right here right now the career mode after this Wrexham career mode it will be with Newcastle United I'm going to pick up the career mode right at the end of the January transfer window I'm going to try to recreate the table as realistically as possible we're basically going to pick it up from day one of February that would be ideal but thank you all so much for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already if you're a Newcastle United fan or whatever if you're a fan of the content I'd really appreciate it I'm going to have a few more Newcastle related videos coming out soon I'm going to have plenty more career mode and FIFA content whatever tickles your fancy cheers again lads you're the best catch you later and bye bye